We have breaking news at 10 from your local election headquarters in the race to replace former Congressman David Cicilline. A quick call tonight for who will face off in November. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Montecalvo. And I'm Shannon Heggy. Gary Leonard quickly winning the GOP nomination by a landslide. And former White House aide Gabe Amo securing the Democratic nomination over second place finisher Aaron Regenberg. And Amo had been gaining momentum at the close of the campaign. Voter turnout likely making a difference here. It was actually on the higher end of the expected range. 12 News Politics Editor Ted Nisi breaking down the results. How much did that play a part? Oh, I think it played a big part, Shannon Mike. In fact, let's take a look at those Democratic primary results right now and get a sense of Gabe Amo not even very close in the end for this crowd of a field. He got 32% of the vote, leading Aaron Regenberg by well over 2,000 votes. You see Sandra Cano behind at 14%. Lieutenant Governor Matos indeed did see her campaign collapse to only 8% support today. That number certainly at 32%. Gabe Amo doing significantly better than even his own supporters, frankly, had been saying privately they hoped he might do. They thought he might be able to win a squeaker with Regenberg. But in the end, it seems that undecided voters broke to Amo. More center-left and moderate voters went him versus the more leftist message of Aaron Regenberg, and that won the day in the Democratic primary. Let's look at the Republican primary, because of course tonight is just primary night. Here you have a landslide for the political newcomer Gary Leonard over Terry Flynn. Gary Leonard taking 76%. He's a retired U.S. Marine Corps veteran. Terry Leonard was on the Middletown Town Council previously. Uh, an easy win for Leonard, but of course you see there are only about 4,000 votes cast in that small GOP primary. It will be an uphill battle for the Republicans to try to win this seat this fall. The last time the first congressional district in Rhode Island voted for Republican was 1992. Mike, Shannon. All right, Ted, thank you. And we have live team coverage for you tonight. Tim White and Kayla Fish are standing by in Providence with more on Aaron Regenberg's and Sabina Matos's campaigns. But first, 12 News reporter Amanda Pitts is at the Gabe Amo camp in Pawtucket. And she joins us live. Amanda, you were posting videos on Twitter of the moment that campaign found out that they were the winner. Amo's parents were quite literally jumping for joy. Yeah, Mike and Shannon, family members were jumping. The crowd was screaming. This watch party has been rocking since we called this race. Take a look at the crowd of supporters here at the Guild in Pawtucket. There are almost friends, elected officials like Congressman Seth Magaziner, the Secretary of State Greg Amore, Senator Sandra Cano just walked in, um, obviously was a part of this race but did not come out on top. But she showed up to congratulate Amo. His family member, uh, family is here as well. They are just elated about this outcome. Now take a look at that moment the race was called and his dad ran up to the front of the room and jumped up and down. Amo spoke shortly afterwards saying he prevailed because of his consistent messaging. He said his, he's overwhelmed but energized as there's a lot to do for Rhode Islanders. Amo grew up here in Pawtucket and graduated from Moses Brown. He said Rhode Islanders see hope when they see him. If he wins in November, Amo would be the first person of color elected to Congress in Rhode Island. I said from day one that Rhode Islanders deserve someone who can be effective from day one. And I'm going to use all of that experience that I've built in Washington and working here in Rhode Island to connect to the key priorities of so many people throughout the first district. So that message resonated. And when I saw people throughout the district today shaking hands out of, outside of polling places, they repeated the, 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 the message. They wanted someone who was optimistic, enthusiastic, and capable of serving their priorities. this race was called. Amo actually walked out of the room to take a call from the president, but missed his call by seconds. Imagine missing a call from the president. I'm sure they'll talk tonight or tomorrow. As for the next steps for Amo, he said he's going to party tonight. He's here among his crowd of supporters behind me, and then tomorrow he will get, get to work on the coming weeks and the election in November. And as for that election, Aaron Regenberg, when he called him to concede tonight, he said he will work with Amo on keeping this seat clear. Live in Pawtucket, Amanda Pitts, 12 News. Amanda, thank you. When the president calls, you're going to take that phone call for sure. <laughs> Only about 3,000 votes the difference between Amo and Aaron Regenberg. Tim White is live in Providence at the Aaron Regenberg watch party. How are things feeling out there, Tim? Well, Shannon, obviously this is not the result that they wanted here at the Regenberg watch party. The room was tense from the moment the polls closed and it grew grim as the results came in showing Gabe Amo leading and never looking back. 
Now, Regenberg took the podium about an hour ago, and he said he thanked his supporters deeply and uh, saying, quote, I'm sorry we weren't able to get it over the finish line. In an interview, Regenberg acknowledged he was the focus of attacks in the final weeks, including at our debate last Tuesday as he was the perceived frontrunner. Regenberg said it was a difficult campaign, and up until the polls closed, he did not know how this one was going to turn out. I never knew what was going to happen. I, I, we were always just doing everything we could to try to swim through the finish. I, I never knew whether we were up or down. We didn't do any internal polling to the end. Uh, we just figured we would do all the work that we could, and I think we did that. As Amanda said, Regenberg called Amo to congratulate him and concede before he gave a speech here inside the Wild Colonial, and he pledged to support Amo going into the general election to help him get into Congress. Now, looking at the numbers of all the communities in the first congressional district, Regenberg appears to have done the best here in Providence, but not by a big margin. Live in Providence, Tim White, 12 News. Tim, thank you. Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos garnering only 2,000 votes, in, uh, votes tonight, coming in fourth place. As we've reported, this campaign was the focus of that signature scandal. We head now to the Sabina Matos campaign at Cellos in Providence, where we find 12 News reporter Kayla Fish live. Kayla? Well, Shannon and Mike, the party is over here at Cellos in Providence. Everyone has since gone home. Now, Sabina Matos had arrived here about 30 minutes after the polls closed. She thanked her supporters here, but said, of course, this was not the result they were hoping for. She says she and her campaign are still trying to figure out exactly what went wrong, but she pointed to the signature scandal as a big factor in tonight's results. We gave it everything we had, you know, I think we did a really good uh, work, really good campaign. There are things that were out of our control, unfortunately. After starting out as the apparent front runner, the Sabina Matos campaign coming up short in the CD1 primary. By mid-July, her campaign was engulfed in a signature scandal after allegations surfaced that her campaign workers submitted forged signatures on her nomination papers. Still waiting to figure out what happened. It's so hard for me to say I wish I had... We really don't know what happened, and fortunately, um, as I said many times, uh, my campaign was the victim of, of fraud. Someone lied to us, and it was hard to overcome that. Matos tells me she has no regrets. My conscience is clean. I know I did everything that I have to do. I know I didn't do anything wrong, and I feel very proud of the work that I did, that my friends and family did, so I feel very proud of that. Now, in a statement, Matos congratulated Gabe Amo on his victory. And while the primary is over, the signature scandal is not. The attorney general's office is still conducting its criminal probe into those allegations. Live in Providence, I'm Kayla Fish, 12 News. Kayla, thank you. Sandra Cano coming in third place in the primary, getting around 14 percent of the vote. We caught up with her when the polls closed at her campaign's watch party, where she expressed her gratitude for Rhode Island voters doing their civic duty. I feel that we did everything that we could. Um, voters came out and democracy is working at its best.